The Eastern Cape government says foreign direct investment is imperative to bolster the province's economy. This as the provincial government is currently hosting a delegation uh, from the Zhejiang province in China. The purpose of the visit is to explore opportunities for cooperation between the two provinces and strengthen bilateral relations with activities planned to engage key stakeholders in the Eastern Cape's economy. The long-standing relationship between Zhejiang province and the Eastern Cape dates back over 20 years. SABC News reporter Londo Nomoy filed this report. You are coming to us in Kabecha where the delegation from Zhejiang province in China is actually in a stakeholder engagement with the Eastern Cape province and we do know that the Premier is also in attendance to this meeting. Well, the meeting is to strengthen the bilateral relations between the two provinces but to discuss further about this and what is expected, we do have the provincial spokesperson, um, Sisi Kosello Aranchi. Sisi, thank you very much for your time. Welcome to SABC News. Um, it's, a, it's an over 20 year relationship as the Premier has alluded in his opening remarks. Just tell us how you guys are hoping to strengthen Strengthen further this bilateral relation with Zhejiang province? Uh, it's been a fruitful um, cooperation between the two provinces and as the Eastern Cape government we are looking to strengthen it to other areas. You would understand that um, uh, China or Zhejiang province has been a great contributor in terms of uh, the investing in the economy of the Eastern Cape. If you go to the Kuha I desert as well as the Eastern and I is that you would find uh, companies that are coming from uh, those two provinces. You also, in the area of education, uh, science and technology, there have been uh, exchange programs as well as in sport between the two provinces. And as the Premier said during the meeting, um, we are looking at expanding that relationship, looking into the area of agriculture, uh, exporting some of our agricultural produce uh, to that uh, Chinese market and we view then Zhejiang province as the entry for the Eastern Cape. Um, there are also other possibilities. We understand that China broadly as a country, they are a partner in terms of uh, BRICS and therefore we are uh, going to be looking into some of those uh, areas where we can uh, collaborate further. In the area of uh, industrial uh, parks, we have heard from the uh, vice governor that uh, they are uh, province has uh, strong industrial parks and we're looking at learning from that and and uh, as we as the province as we are uh, rebuilding some of our industrial parks we do understand just speaking on the exchange programs that you have we do understand that a lot of youth get to benefit from this you know has it yielded the positive results or the targets that you guys has, have anticipated as the eastern cape government of course there could be more that is uh, done um, but we are encouraged by uh, the commitment uh, from the vice governor that says that the Eastern Cape uh, province, young people and students in general can access their institutions, either institutions of higher learning or even at high school levels to learn more from that uh, market. Also, currently there are discussions between Sarabatman district, uh, district municipality, specifically uh, your local municipality in Nzambe, that is looking at exchanging uh, not only uh, an exchange in terms of students going there to learn but from a people to people arrangement with the municipalities in that part of the uh, world so uh, there's quite a lot that uh, we could gain from this relationship and as I've said um, it's, it's, it can move to greater uh, heights and we are looking also at uh, the East London idea is that using its uh, science and technology Park uh, as a, a home that can expose young people to how uh, the Chinese market, specifically Zhejiang province, um, is uh, performing around uh, the science and technology area and getting them to learn more from those markets. And also, just to move on the point of energy, um, we do have an energy crisis that we are facing in South Africa. Um, from your discussions that you
you'll be having here, you know, what are some of the discussions you'll be having, trying to navigate, you know, we do understand that the president of China also assisted South Africa within its energy crisis. Um, how will this assist or position the Eastern Cape to better its economy? You will recall that um, during the BRICS summit, the, the president of China committed uh, his government to support uh, South Africa in terms of uh, improving uh, and getting out of the energy crisis. And you would also understand that as the Eastern Cape province, we are positioned already as one of the leaders in terms of renewable energy with the wind farms that we continue to build across the province. And we will um, engage more in terms of that and how uh, Zhejiang province can assist uh, the province in terms of uh, building uh, its renewable energy capacity as we look at uh, assisting the country as a whole in terms of uh, generating energy. Just lastly, um, how is government in the Eastern Cape making the environment conducive to lure more investments as the vice governor also says that they are willing to invest more within this province? How is government actually making that environment conducive for investments? We are doing um, quite a lot to make that environment uh, conducive. You would, also, uh, noted, you would have noted that the premier insight here is with the CEOs of both the East London IDZ as well as the Guha IDZ. We also have the Eastern Cape uh, Development Corporation part of this engagement and that is a key player in terms of uh, mobilizing and promoting investment um, uh, to other markets within South Africa and across the world. And also, um, as the Eastern Cape, we, we have our own um, one-stop investment center, which is being operated uh, by the ECDC, and that is a center that looks at uh, making sure that we take care of the investors. We do not mobilize them just to come into our province and leave them alone, but we also uh, create that enabling environment um, for them uh, to do the business that they want want to do uh, in our province. Of course, uh, looking at a variety of issues, you would know the, there's the whole issue of, of energy crisis and we continuously engage um, with all the investors that are in our province so that we look at um, uh, some of the measures that we can take to mitigate the risk of um, uh, energy not being available to them. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Thank you so much. That was Kusel Waranchi, the provincial spokesperson of the Eastern Cape, just briefly unpacking to us some of the discussions that will be taking place within this stakeholder engagement. But from us here in Kabecha, it's back to you in studio.